Welcome to Overdrive AF, the official podcast of the Overdrive Fitness. The Overdrive Fitness. Not to be confused with any of the other 12 across the country. My name is Teddy Gerzon, and I'm joined by Gina Marie Gerzon. Hello, Overdrive! <laughs> we also have here the Destroyer. What's up? And joined with us today, breaking their hiatus. Unless they were here last week, I don't remember. But we have Titan and Brajol. Woo! Morning back. shift. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, they're not used to uh, the early mornings yet. Not quite yet, as uh, they're clearly extremely lively right now. So, double adverb. Gotta love it. They're part timing um, it. Yeah. Yeah, Titan. Way to way to look alive. <laughs> they were on strike for a little bit. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, Raj picked his head up. And it's going back down pretty soon. So, uh, brisk Saturday morning at Overdrive Fitness in New York. Yeah, it is It is beautiful, for sure. It's in the 60s now, I think, right? But mm-hmm. this morning was like 46. And I think we're about to have another um, family member on the couch, or at least beg us to give up our spot. Dude, we, we are working, bro. So are you uh, going to add have to, wait. to this? Do you want to add to this? Do you want to say something? What do you want? What you want to talk about dog bones today? What do you want to talk about? How can dog bones affect human nutrition? What? <laughs> what? What? The ratio's off, right? No. More meat to bone. What? Yeah. yeah dog, dog bones could be a good starchy uh, substitution. Protein. Oh. It'll definitely prevent you from wanting to eat more. So that's an easy way to cut yeah. out calories. The aftertaste, <laughs> just Gushed. nasty. From what I hear, I've never actually tried to eat a milk bone before. So. <laughs> Not since I was 13, but that's a story for another day. Um, but yeah, here we are. Again, It's uh, I, I just feel like Mother Nature just totally 2020'd us and said, fuck your summer, here's fall. <laughs> like he literally dropped 20 degrees overnight. Not happy about it. Bro, enough. <laughs> Titan's upset about we want it. we want three more weeks of summer. Yeah, that's right? how I feel. I'm not ready to pack away the yes. tank tops and, and uh, cut them. I am no. <laughs> I am not. This is. I am not ready. I'm just saying a Desi. I, <laughs> I said I, I, I'm not used to my hands being so dry. So like I had to put so on early pants today. I don't want to wear pants. <sighs> right, Braj? I want to be like you. No pants. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <sighs> You're not happy. Is there room for them to come up on this couch right now? On top of us, I mean, you want me to sit over there? I will sit over there. Maybe I'll just grab a box and I'll sit over here. But yeah, why don't we, while I go grab a box for me to sit on to make room for our four-legged children. What? On the couch that we paid for. Do we have canine viewers, listeners? They did nothing Is that what for. it is? Yes? Um, yes? We're going we're gonna to toss it over to the destroyer so we can get the weekly update on jump shot quality and mileage logged. Yeah, buddy. Jump shot was rough now that it's finally back, as to be expected, though. It, it got a long break, and I'm pretty sure it was 28 miles this week. Solid. Yeah, we're I've getting back to it. I've done about zero in the last three. <laughs> Cardio is more for some people than it is for others, I guess. But it's essential. It's necessary. Yeah. There's multiple ways to get it. You don't There's, have to run. Yes. And, you know, even in the realm of strength training and lifting, you will recover faster if you do incorporate some sort of cardiovascular-based conditioning. Well, the, I guess the most condition I have gotten was uh, Sunday night for my birthday dinner. Um, I ate... I ate my trace light chase cake uh, super fast, so that elevated the heart rate and uh, broke a tiny sweat. But mm. as far as getting in any mileage, you're just, you know, uh, not bragging or anything. But the, you know, our our in person membership has really started to reach its capacity, um, especially due to the restricted guidelines that we're under. But uh, which is also a great thing because people coming in are looking for a lot more than just training. They want the whole, the full gamut of what we have to offer. Let's put it that way. And we're not even just talking about weekday warriors. It's our athletes too. So 
I would say um, probably 80% of returning and new members are opting in for the the full customized coaching, whether uh, between the training, nutrition, and just uh, the the full accountability that we have to offer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, onboarding all these people into our app so we can track them and coach them properly has taken up the time that I would normally take to run at night, coupled with the shorter shorter days of sunlight. So normally I would run at like 8 p.m. And mm -hmm. uh, honestly, where we're located, it's not quite the wilderness, but it's enough to where I don't really want to risk seeing a coyote on the, tr on the rail trail. Yeah, we mm -hmm. definitely have some wildlife. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it's the 18 wild turkeys that we saw the other day, I was telling yes. Desi, or the random coyote that kind of runs through the parking lot. Um, I mean, and we have plenty of colonies of stray cats around too. So not that they ever bother anybody because the ones we have are pretty cool. Um, we have a nice crew, but, uh, but yeah. Family of deer. The deer, yes. What? I don't know how I forgot that, but we have families of deer that kind of trot their way through. And then, you know, the dogs and everything else. So. I mean, you never know. Maybe running into a coyote on the run will make you get, like, a better mile time. <laughs> it possibly could. Depending on how healthy they look, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Because we've seen, we've, we've seen some healthy ones. And depending on the mood, I mean, it could be my paleo dinner. So. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, you never know. Game food, game. Yes, Gamey? very lean <laughs> and possibly rabid. But, uh... <laughs> raccoons yolo you know? am i right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah i mean thank thank god at least one of us has been running a lot right titan oh goodness gracious titan's slowly breaking out of quarantine mood so is braj might have to change the setting on this mic as it's picking up titan's snoring snoring <laughs> so yeah um what is it that you wanted to talk about this week? Um, I was just throwing the ideas around to you guys a little while ago about um, just talking about um, the sometimes not so visible um, changes and um, that that happen on our transformation journey. So all the all the positive sometimes and a, a lot of them are not so visible, but um, definitely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Noticeable benefits and results of when we decide to kind of stay consistent, pretty consistent on our transformation journey. So it's not just the weight that drops on the scale, not just the body fat percentage that goes down when we weigh in and, you know, check, on, check in on our in-body machine, but um, all the other really great things that we begin to notice um, when we decide to make a change. And it, that could be for our general population and our athletes too. So, you want me to start with that? Yeah. Um, so when we, when we kind of enter into this transformation journey, so we're talking about the nutrition side, we're talking about the fitness side, um, and the accountability side, yes, but uh, so what do we get out of that? So we start to change our diet, um, we start to exercise, um, things like that. We start to eat better foods and all this other good stuff, but, you know, maybe take our supplements and things like that. But what do we start to notice outside of, um, oh, the scale's going down, I'm losing weight, or my body fat um, definitely went down on the in-body machine this past week. So, yeah, so those are visible Right, we see them. They're they're tangible, visible results. We've we've got them. We can log them. But what about the things like um, when we start to actually get better quality sleep, and we actually need less of it? Um, we're waking up. Um, we have more of a spring in our step, so we have actually more energy throughout the day. Um, we have uh, clients and athletes that come to us with all different goals. You know, some of our adult clients, like, you know, I just want to be able to play outside with my grandkids. Or, you know, I want to be able to do one strict pull-up. Or I want to actually be able to last through a whole session without having to sit down and take a break. 
you know, things like that. Or I want to be able to bend down and be able to pick things up properly without hurting my back. Those kind of things. So we have clients and athletes with all different types of goals. Not just, I want to look better in a bikini. I want to have a six pack, that kind of thing. Um, what about starting to crave healthier foods? Like you're actually craving a nice a huge crispy salad with your with your lunch or your dinner um, uh, what about um, you know having um, more energy throughout the day like I had said you don't feel like that three o'clock slump and you need that third cup of coffee to get you through the rest of the day um, even just talking about um, actually having maybe um, you're noticing that you need to buy smaller pants or smaller shirts or things like that um i would say uh definitely having even for our husbands and wives boyfriends and girlfriends fiancés if we want to talk about it when we're starting to train um train more often and lifting weights or so resistance training um if we're getting um, more specific like you know having more interest and having maybe a bigger sex drive or or having you know just in general like those are those are things actually that that are bi a big deal you know mm -hmm. um gosh i mean i could i could keep going on and on about this kind of stuff but um you know starting to to notice how the foods that you're eating make you feel um, you know, wanting to eat um, that omelet with, with your eggs and your egg whites in it and your vegetables and your oatmeal instead of having, instead of craving like, all right, let me go grab that bacon, egg, and cheese with extra bacon and extra cheese, and I'm going to go get some hash browns on the side. And we're not saying that we can't um, bring those things in every so often, but um, noticing how how much lighter it makes you feel when you're getting in those different types of foods, making those better choices. Um, I don't know, you wanna add a little bit into that? I mean, as far as, uh, you know, ways to see improvements, you're saying? Um, you know, maybe if, if you have your yearly checkup to the doctor and your doctor's like, oh, okay, let's just, Let's just run some basic blood work, and then the doctor comes back. You know, your cholesterol is down, your blood pressure. I mean, it can take you off your medication. You know that. You know, um, say you, even though you are in the midst of losing weight, which is or losing body fat, and and or both, and all of a sudden, like, okay, so look, remember we said we were going to lower your blood pressure medication. I don't think you need it anymore. Like these are these are big things. Less medications. Um, um, you know, the checkups are better, your, your blood work results are looking better, like your cholesterol, your HDL is up, your LDL is down, your triglycerides are down. Like, these are all things that, you know, um, just your body starts to function better. You just feel better overall. Things like that. I mean, even for our athletes too, just um, I think that um, b better blood flow to your brain, which would include um, that would, of course, be a better better memory, um, being able to retain information, things like that, you know? These mm -hmm. are all the things that we don't necessarily think about. We don't measure um, these things. Um, With some of our members, it's like, you know, their work uniform is fitting better, and they had no idea. Say that again? Their work uniform is fitting better. Right, so, right, exactly. Um, and, and, you know, we had talked about this over... The quarantine too that um, you know exercise and being really um, you know just focusing on structuring you know getting your protein in getting those good foods in good good foods in all different colors of the rainbow which means okay fewer colds your immune system is 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 definitely stronger your work right so all of those things are are important too um, you feel like um, you have more energy maybe to go out and be social instead of just sitting on the couch and watching Netflix. Not saying that that's a bad thing, because I think balance is important too and rest and recovery is important. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting better sleep, better quality sleep, you might need less of it. You're feeling more open to being maybe more social. 
making better choices about how you're eating, you're exercising, you're less stressed because you're exercising and you're eating better and you're sleeping better. So, you know, um, I think, you know, your, your, your uh, personality changes, your, your skin looks better overall when you're exercising. Um, you know, it's the whole package. It's not just the number on the scale. It's not just, oh, my body fat went down. Those are all excellent things because, and then when we start to roll into the benefits of what could happen um, in conjunction with losing weight and losing body fat, losing inches around our waist, losing inches around our arms and thighs and our, um, and our hips, our neck even. You know, some guys are just thicker individuals. Um, all of those things, they um, less joint pain, if we're talking about that, right? So how much more pressure does, you know, every five pounds of, of weight put on the joints? So, you know, things like that. Um, you're, you're able to move more fluidly. You're not, you don't feel as achy. Um, in general, you're in a better mood right? Like all of those things are, they're not necessarily measurable, but they're, you feel them. They're measurable inside. And people start to see the difference. Man, you, you look, you just look great. You just seem happier. You know, like, you know, you, you seem like you have more energy. Like, what are you doing? You know, that kind of thing. Well, it's getting, you know, I've been getting better sleep. I've been, um, I've been eating better, I've been training four times a week, I'm taking my supplements, I've been including um, a big ass salad every day in my, you know, for my lunch as part of my meals. You know, I'm trying to get in more protein. Maybe I'm meditating a little bit every night or in the morning when I wake up, first thing when I wake up. Or I get a, I get a, a walk in in the morning and I go to train at night. That kind of thing, so. I mean, I think I lift, listed at least 10 of those. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's not just about, you know, when you, when you enter into this journey, it's not just about, yeah, losing body fat, losing weight. Yes, those are great and eating better and things like that. But what um, that cascade effect, you know, like that ripple effect of what do those things do? So when you come in here and we sit down with you and we say, okay, what are your goals? And we go over, okay, how can we start to create a structure so that we can um, create that better lifestyle for you, that change for you, that overall change for you? So all of those great things tend to kind of follow with those changes. You start exercising, you start eating better, you start taking the supplements, you listen to what we say and you follow, follow instructions start sleeping better, you need less sleep but you could, because you're getting better quality sleep, you're, be, you're able to last longer through your workouts, um, those kind of things, you know? Then there's, uh, I mean, one of my favorite things to look for is uh, the decrease in self-destruction for a lot of people. So they, they start, they want to clean things up, and they know that, you know, they destroy their bodies with... Uh, usually alcohol or, you know, junk food, sweets, fatty foods, stuff like that. So, um, you know, people that decide to go all in with us, it's not so much that we even tell them to abstain from things like that. So, yeah, usually, like, uh, the thing that I see a lot in people that, think, you know, they go all in, even if it, it's only the th- first three weeks, I, I start to hear from them saying, like, yeah, I just, I'm not drinking every night, or now I'm only drinking three nights a week. Or two nights a week, and you know what I'm what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, you start to clean things up, and I mean, first you got to find your why. You, just, you can't just say something like, "I just need to lose weight." You're like, well, why do you need to lose weight? You know, there's got to be a reason. There's got to, it's got to be something that makes you feel like shit. So maybe it's actually you physically feel like shit, or you know, you're you're still young, but you are mad at yourself that you. You can only take the elevator and escalator because you're so such a lazy piece of shit that you can't even go up a flight of stairs without wanting to have a heart attack. All right, so I mean, these people they see the greatest change the quickest because you know uh, they'll, they'll say to us like, "Yeah, I'm just not really drinking because they were drinking to escape pain, to feel numb, as opposed to actually enjoying your drink." And when you and you actually enjoy your alcohol, you'll notice you're you're not drinking nearly enough. You know, you may walk around with a smile on your face, but 
usually you're trying there's a reason why you're going through two dozen claws every night you know on the weekend or if you're polishing off a bottle of whiskey on your own every three days you know it's uh trying to escape something and then you see you know you start to eat cleaner get a more structured training plan and just structured day overall you know everything starts to lighten up you know and we see it we see it in our members faces and their their body language and everything you know um and then it's not always alcohol though it's you know people just can't keep themselves from stuffing their face with cookies you know or sometimes sometimes it's chips pita chips stuff like that you know it's things that you would think aren't so bad but the calories do add up fast so um yeah i mean it's like sometimes just making the simple decision to commit to change you, you see change all over so quickly too so it's uh People would be surprised how quickly their lives can change just by deciding to make the change and, um, you know, just watching how quickly the self-destruction disappears. And I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's, and that change could be different for everybody. It could be, um, it's not saying that you have to, you know, some people might, oh, I have my egg whites and my oatmeal and I have my, um, my tablespoon of peanut butter in the morning and I love it and so maybe just a better breakfast for them and for their family is instead of you know the happy meals in the morning or um, the can of coke and maybe a donut because I've heard that too and, and you know people do it is that you know maybe they end up making a couple of eggo waffles and a couple of eggs or something I mean I would take that any day over the can of coke and the donut you know but that is a significant change yeah you know, and some people and, even and I, eating breakfast. <laughs> just change. right, or um, you know, um, being able to, you know, maybe putting an alarm on your phone. Okay, I watched my two episodes of whatever that may be. You know, maybe they're twenty minutes a piece. Okay, I gave myself that forty minutes or forty-five minutes. I'm going to go wash my face, brush my teeth, and go to bed now. I'm just gonna, you know, actually just chill and go and actually get an extra hour of sleep night or whatever instead of you know on the computer and and um you know kind of binge watch which which we all do sometimes um but you know getting that quality sleep in or turning in early or um uh, maybe for them instead of you know getting home early and ordering pizza and a hero and this that and the other thing and binge watching or what and you know with that six pack of beer Maybe they, you know, get together with a friend and have a nice, quiet dinner or something, and just, you know, just catch up. Or, or maybe they take like like an evening yoga class and then, um, you know, just chill for the rest of the night or, or whatever. Like it could be something. What's going to be healthy, beneficial? So psychologically beneficial, physically beneficial, that kind of thing. You know, if that's a stress reduction, that in itself, our hormones change so much when we reduce stress. I mean, people are working so much more now, especially now with our present circumstances, you know, getting that, switching it up and um, allowing your body to actually release those good hormones because you have produ been producing so many of the stress hormones. That can make us retain fat, make us gain weight. You know, our bodies become very inflamed there. And then uh, there's that whole cascade of hormones is like that ripple effect again, where you want to eat the junk food. You want to stay out late and party maybe. You want to, you know, do all the things that maybe make you feel good in a sense for the moment but make you feel crappy later on kind of thing. So, I don't know. Once you make the choice, I think, you know, just making one change at a time. But it's not just about, you know, losing weight and losing body fat. Yes, those are, I think that that's a definite driver because it's so physical and it's, you can see it, but it's all of the, the other things that um, you might feel and sense in other ways. They might not be seen necessarily, but they're felt, you know? Yeah, I really have nothing else to add on that. I don't think we covered it at all. What about you, Desi? What have you seen change? I mean, you've had a ridiculous 
transformation since yeah. this podcast is starting. Um, I think the thing that I noticed before, like, any weight loss was definitely, like, lack of joint pain. Mm. Because I've had knee problems since, like, the eighth grade. But then when I started really running and exercising and even just, like, stretching on a regular basis, yeah. you'd be surprised how, like, quickly that stuff starts to kind of, like, fade away. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I agree. You just feel better, you know, like, moving your body, um, all those good hormones, right? Like, who said it? I don't know. Somebody said it. It's like, food and alcohol, like, the, the easiest prescription like anxiety drugs but exercise is um the best drug for antidepressants or something like antidepressant drug or something like that i don't know yeah. just it just make movement just makes you feel better because you release so many good hormones and um it's it's like you need your daily dose right you, you need to get your fix but it it becomes a way of life so just like you you know you get up in the morning um take a shower brush your teeth or whatever that order is for you it's the same thing exercise meditation yoga running you know whatever that is you get that daily dose in it's just it becomes a way of life you know yeah. and you wouldn't want to miss it yeah and i think that like feeling better and looking better work in conjunction with each other because like if you look good but you feel like shit you're not going to notice that you are looking good so like mm -hmm. the feeling good should precede looking good Yes. because that's the only way you're really going to notice. And I and that's I think another thing too is like what the first several weeks we always try to remind everybody that how do you feel first and then it's those next several weeks after because it's those first 3 to 4 weeks where it's like people can either stay on the train or they they get off the train because it's a it's a change, right? Mm -hmm. So once we kind of hit that 3 to 4 week mark and we continue onward then you start to really notice the physical transformation and then everything starts to really come together you know are you agreeing with me or no no yes <laughs> for sure and that could be another podcast topic for sure what the cost of getting lean or too lean too lean yeah like what the call like what what are the you know, uh, the, one of the uh, it's, we all have to sacrifice a little things. bit that's what i'm getting at so you know you know but there, there, everything comes with a little sacrifice so we have to get to work on time we have to leave maybe we have to leave 10 or 15 minutes earlier than we had been so we don't hit the traffic that we used to hit to get to work on time or early or not to miss that train or whatever or you know the sacrifice of you know maybe getting home start dinner 15 minutes early so that we can all sit down as a family so that maybe we can all watch our show together and then we can put the kids to bed and then I can sit with my husband or my wife and maybe have a, a cup of tea before we go to sleep you know like little thing like you know little sacrifices you make to make things happen and everybody we all have the same 24 hours it's just how do we spend it kind of thing you know Um, I mean, I have nothing else to add to that. Okay. Anything else you want to elaborate and bring up? I'm trying to think of uh, if there are any big wins that we didn't highlight this week that we probably should have. Oh. Um. Well, one of the interruptions that we just got during this podcast is, uh, you know, uh, the delivery of the Ultimate Weekday Warrior shirts have just come in. And that's why the dogs were just barking. Um, you know, the mailman that definitely has glasses but is not very observant <laughs> continues to disrupt <laughs> every time he comes in. So, um, better, whatever. I Hopefully mean, I he doesn't listen to this podcast and go post a lot. I, know, I, <laughs> but, um, I think the OD app is working out very well. Oh, that's actually, yeah, that's killing it. Everybody has been super interactive in it and they're able to track and see their their improvements and their results so uh, I mean shout out to Nick Mulcahy he's being super active on it uh, Nick mate he works for well we met Nick through his cousin Carrie Nick's originally from um, 
from Massachusetts. He's kind of an, of a mass hole. And um, <laughs> he was here one summer with his cousin, and they were training because he was playing uh, baseball at Salve Regina, and Carrie was playing lacrosse at East Stroudsburg. So they were here one summer training. Um, Nick reconnected with us uh, a couple months ago. So now that he's a, he's a washed up meathead, he wanted to get into shape, get pretty lean. He, he did very well on his own losing weight, but now he wanted to really pack on some lean muscle. So, you know, um, I think Nick's a prime example of somebody not using the excuse of a busy work schedule and traveling to, to be a reason why he can't achieve his health and fitness goals because, uh, you know, Nick works in Barstool. So, you know, he travels a lot. Um, as a matter of fact, Nick is... I think he's in Philly right now, but uh, you know, over the last like two weeks, he's been in. So even just counting Philly, but obviously he's in Manhattan where he lives and works. But uh, I know he was somewhere in Jersey for a golf outing. He was in Boston the week before, and I think he was in Chicago. Like all all within actually a two week window. So <laughs> the kid travels a lot. Maybe even Arizona too. I forget. But uh, regardless, he's able to use our simple custom nutrition coaching to be able to eat on the road cover all his bases as far as his nutrition stay on point with his uh you know with not only his fitness but making sure we're hitting the goals that he wants and uh yeah i mean shout out to nick for just continuing to kill it you know no excuses literally zero excuses and uh gives us a lot of feedback on the workouts that we sent him because um, that only helps us improve the quality of the workouts that we deliver. Um, but yeah, and then once he, when he's in town once in a while, we just, you know, we do his body comp on the end body. We check his body fat, his uh, lean muscle mass, and obviously his weight. And, uh, yeah. He's been doing great. Yeah. Without and any access to, like, real weights. So, and I think no he's, excuse. He's definitely... The proof is in the pudding where um, you use the app, you use it for what it's there for, it's going to guide you through everything. He's on the road all the time. He's able to meet his requirements for his nutrition. And he's not necessarily counting macros. No. He's using portion sizes, mm -hmm. right? Would we say just, you know, like it's simple. When we say simple, it, it's effective and it's appropriate. Um, it's customized. Everything is customized. He's he's hitting all of his requirements. He loves the workouts. They're they're doing what they need to do for him. Mm -hmm. And, and all he's he, working crazy hours. Yeah. Yep. Let's put it this way: he's found a way to lean out and living on the food that his job provides him wherever he's traveling. And we're talking like bacon egg and cheeses hot dogs hamburgers uh you know he may be responsible for getting one meal on his own uh he's eating a lot of airport food because i see him you know he'll send me send us pictures through the app through our overdrive fitness app to make sure that uh you know it's adequate and um you know obviously we're never going to try tell someone they need to break the bank for their own health because that could make somebody depressed too but you know he's uh no, I'm, I'm really proud of Nick. He's really killing it. He's, he's literally got no excuses, you know. And it's great because not only is he leaning out, it's like his body's getting rid of toxins, you know, and I don't really speak that much about it. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is, I mean, Nick, you can continue to work out as much as you want and eat better. And, you know, I know you haven't really been drinking, but you, you got to do something about that toxin in your body that is, it just reeks of um, – Massachusetts sports fandom so you know the, the Patriots the Sox you know the, the Bruins I mean the, uh, until you can just give up your love for them and including the Celtics then I mean you'll, you'll never 100% hit your goal so you'll get like maybe 90% there but that last 5 to 10% is just gonna drag you down so I mean hey Tom Brady left, so... Is he a Sam Adams drinker? <laughs> you know what? There's a couple things, Boston, I do actually do like. Because I know so. you like Sam Adams, don't you? I do love <laughs> Sam Adams. Um, I'm a big fan of the variety packs, you know. 
I actually avoided them in college because I was like, I'm never doing anything Boston. I actually, for for four years, I refused to listen to the band Boston. I had <laughs> such a hate of Boston, but I, I actually love the band Boston. I did not know um, this. I am not a fan. Never was. So a dedicated. Fan of, what? You're so dedicated <laughs> to this anti Massachusetts when I'm, when I'm in, I'm lifestyle. all in. But then, you know, I've never really been a fan of Boston cream pie, so that's just something that's never going to change. And it's probably because I've been scarred since I was a child where, like, my grandfather was like, oh, I got you a donut. And I was like, sweet, I love chocolate frosted donuts. And it wasn't just chocolate frosted. There was a little surprise, and, I was like, my palate was not ready for that. At the time, I was expecting jelly. <laughs> no, I just wanted a plain donut with some frosting on it, and instead I got an extra surprise. Like not cool. Felt like you were drowning. Yeah, I was like, "What's, what's all this? What's going on? My taste buds don't like this. It's happening. Not cool." So we can talk about donuts. though. what kind of? Uh, I didn't mean to take away from Nick. No, nah, fuck Nick. <laughs> Freaking Patriot fandom. I only say it because I'm a Jet fan, and uh, the NFL started back up. But uh, you know, I don't know. Watching the Jet, being a Jet fan is just like loving car wrecks. Like, you know, you really shouldn't be watching them, and most of them are near fatal. And I don't actually mean like anybody dies at a Jet game, but a little bit of a Jet fan dies every time they watch a Jet game. So. Uh, I mean, if I could get a dollar for every time I wanted to throat punch a Jet fan for saying, this is our year, <laughs> I could have retired yesteryear. So. <laughs> but yeah, all in all, he's been doing awesome. Yes. Awesome. And he's really happy. And that, at mm-hmm. the end of the day, that's what we want. We want our members and our athletes to be happy. We want them to enjoy what they're doing to feel successful, to feel accomplished. And I think whether it's remote or in person, we're getting all of that feedback from them, which is, we can't ask for anything more than that. So I think the the podcast graphic for this episode, I'll send you uh, the Photoshop picture I did for Nick, which uh, it's, um, well, it's it's actually originally is Nick, but then Pitbull took it because (laughs) Nick's basically Mr. Worldwide <laughs> and all the traveling. Right. And I think you saw that. So. Did you show me that one? Yeah. Yeah, you've been playing. You've been playing with that app. Photoshop mix. Yeah. Solid. Solid app. Yeah, Teddy's been all different celebrities. Mm-hmm. I've really been exposing my ethnicity with my uh, talent within these apps. Yes. Might be something that Desi has to play with for the next posts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We might have some solid deep fakes coming up, yeah, right? Man. Really. It was so, all the dogs and the cats too. Yeah, I mean, I think that that about wraps up what we have for this week. Anything else to add? I think we got it. All right, boys. I'm smushed. Thanks for kicking me off the couch. My back is killing me. But uh, that's all we have for you this week. Tune in to uh, next week's episode. And while you're at it, spread the word about the show. Um, spread the word about the fact that we have a six-week challenge coming up. There will be more details on that next episode. And uh, you know, just uh, not only spread the word, but hit up iTunes. Go to 5 Star Review. And hopefully, if you are serious about it,